Greetings loves, it is I, Tactical Girlfriend. Good to have you back here. Today I'm going to be discussing the concepts and methodologies behind concealed carrying. Before I jump in, I just wanna thank everybody for their continued support. I really appreciate everybody helping me build up this channel and I want to encourage folks that if they do enjoy what they have seen so far and continue to see, to share, like, and subscribe. Thank you. One really quick tip of the day, if you don't want to burn like this, don't accidentally bump into the gas block of your AK after firing it. So let's jump in. What even is concealed carrying anyway? Well, concealed carrying is as the name implies, you are concealing something that you are carrying. What exactly are you carrying? In this instance, it's a gun. Why would you carry a gun with you? Well, where it's allowed and legal and convenient, it is a very easy way to defend yourself in your day-to-day -day activities. Well, why are you concealing it? Well, because we're assuming that whatever locale you're in, it is legal to do so. It is also, again, convenient to do so. And open carrying in your day-to-day -day activities generally deemed as pretty rude. So, so before we get into the nuts and bolts of concealed carrying, there are a few practical considerations that we need to take. First of all, is it legal where you live? Um, you don't want to oh no the 5 so make sure that it is absolutely legal whatever you're doing first and foremost. Another really important consideration in terms of legality is interstate travel. If you are concealed carrying from a place that it is legal to conceal carry the way you are to a place where it potentially may not, you're going to want to know that. So consider your destinations as you travel when you are concealed carrying. A really important thing that I want to underscore here is that concealed carrying is a lifestyle. Is not something that you just casually pick up one day. It is something that you carefully understand how to do very proficiently. It is something where you are constantly aware of the status of your weapon, that you are carrying in a responsible manner, in a legal manner, and that you have good habits built upon it. So with that being said, I think that you should generally aim to carry all the time. This is not generally something that people will decide to do when they feel like it because the entire point of concealed carrying is to always be ready to defend yourself. That means also building good habits that you can retain constantly and it is not just a once in a while affair. This also means developing a regimen around how you carry. So generally loading up and holstering properly and making sure that you're truly good to go out that door every single time. And then when you go home, make sure that you're unloading properly and that you are safely dismounting that weapon. Another really important point that I want to stress is that by merits of concealed carrying, you are utilizing what is potentially lethal force. This means that you also are responsible with how you conduct yourself, keeping yourself away from potentially dangerous situations in which you might feel the need to use it. You don't want to use it if you don't have to. This means not getting into fights and brawls. It means generally avoiding conflict as much as humanly possible. I also want to make a good point here that when I carry, I absolutely will never carry without pepper spray. I want to be able to resort to less than lethal force, if at all possible, before I ever even think about drawing a gun on anybody. The last thing I ever want to do is actually shoot somebody. Another really important aspect of this lifestyle is your wardrobe. A lot of people who are concealing on their person are going to require a very particular wardrobe to facilitate this. This might mean a complete overhaul of your wardrobe or getting creative with various concealed carry methods in order to better tailor that around your wardrobe. Regardless, you don't want to leave your home looking like some weird super soldier. You want to still act normal. You still want to look normal. You want to blend in. You don't want to scream, I'm loaded. Just make sure that you're being very practical about this. Another really important aspect is considering where you're going with your concealed carry weapon. Are you going near a school zone? What's the legality around that? Are you going to a bar? Well, you probably aren't gonna be allowed to conceal carry inside there if you're getting served alcohol. There is various places where you simply are not legally permitted to conceal carry. So please keep that in mind. Also, while you're about, consider how you usually are going to be moving or not moving. That's gonna determine what conceal carry methods are best. Some are better for people who are doing a lot of walking or running or people who sit down a lot, such as a truck driver. These are all very, very important considerations to take when you are determining how you want to conceal carry. Another really important thing to underscore, especially for new people to conceal carrying, 
you're gonna feel an itch to constantly check the status of your weapon make sure that it's holstered properly make sure that the holster is positioned on your body properly you're gonna be doing a lot of weird fumbling and padding around try to avoid that as much as possible because it looks really weird and kind of defeats the entire purpose of concealing your weapon going back around to building good habits around concealed carrying you need to train you have to train you must train you gotta train you absolutely have to train i cannot stress this enough if you are carrying on the daily you need to build good daily habits this needs to become a daily skill this should come just as easily as making coffee in the morning you got to be able to draw draw smoothly and draw safely and not flag anything you don't intend to flag and pull the trigger and squeeze off shots on target best way to do this is constantly doing dry fire practice at home and some range time train not only just with range ammo but also make sure that you're using good carry ammo and practice often with it with all this in mind this means not only being proficient but being very quick in a life and death situation every fraction of a second counts so mitigating and economizing every step of the way will greatly increase your chances of being successful this means that i personally carry with a round in the chamber and i advocate that everybody do this as so long as they are confident in their hardware that they are confident in their holster and that they are confident in whatever safety mechanisms they use when carrying and that they are properly equipped to do so with regards to holsters i want to underline what exactly i require of a holster in terms of holsters i generally want it to be some sort of rigid material that at least covers a trigger guard to prevent a negligent discharge i don't want anything snagging on that trigger accidentally and firing a shot off when you don't want to do that this is why i will generally advocate for materials like kydex over leather kydex is a very nice lightweight rigid material it is very affordable and is easily shaped to form exactly around your gun specifications and dimensions as far as leather goes leather can warp over time and can potentially get itself locked into the trigger guard and cause an nd you don't want that it's really important to keep it simple you shouldn't have a million and a half holsters and swap them out constantly and a bunch of different guns you want to be proficient in all of your hardware this means at some point you need to have a very small select few bits of hardware that you are relying on and that you're training on and specializing on so with the philosophy out of the way let's talk hardware as far as concealed carrying goes you got a ton of options because there's a bunch of different people with a bunch of different bodies with a bunch of different wardrobes with a bunch of different guns you're going to have a lot of good options none of them are going to be very convenient for you so it's very very important to choose carefully here the first method of concealed carrying that i want to touch upon is in waistband this is probably the most common one that you'll come across and for a good reason within waistband you are concealing a firearm within the waistband of either your pants or a skirt some holsters will have a mounting clip as such that goes over a belt and then your firearm will mount on the inside of that waistline as such the reason that this is a good method is because it is readily accessible because your hands are usually around your waistline and you can quickly draw as far as belt mounted holsters go you want to make sure that you are using a proper carry belt that means a rigid and thick enough belt in which the holster can clip on and not come off when you pull the gun up to draw if you're wearing an article of clothing like shorts with an elastic waistline or a skirt or anything that doesn't have belt loops on it to mount your belt on you want to make sure that you're using some sort of clip that can aggressively grab onto that material properly such as this ulti clip here which can clamp down and hold on very well to that material so that it doesn't come up when you draw a very important consideration is where you mount your holster on your waistline this is going to be unique to every individual and their body and their needs and how they dress but keep in mind that i personally recommend starting with a penix carry a penix carry is your 11 o'clock or two o'clock position of your waistline generally this will give you the most control over your immediate weapon it'll give you the most access to it it'll give you the fastest draw this is absolutely the best starting point that i want to recommend a lot of folks like to carry from their three o'clock to their six o'clock to their nine o'clock position and these are all absolutely valid ways to carry however they do come with some disadvantages 
you may have reduced draw time because you're reaching back rather than reaching your immediate frontal region. This also means that you don't have nearly as much control of the weapon if you're concerned about people grabbing for your gun. Another thing to consider is that people oftentimes do fall backwards more often than forwards, so that does create a liability if you do fall on your gun. If you are concealing your weapon in the small of your back, you especially need to consider whether you're standing a lot or sitting a lot, as sitting can be generally uncomfortable if you're doing so. Another thing to consider is if you're bending over a lot, doing a lot of work that requires you to do so, the garments that you choose may ride up and reveal your weapon. Another method is pocket carry. Pocket carry is basically exactly what it sounds like. It's typically you carrying some sort of subcompact pistol in your pockets unless you have really, really big pockets in which really cool for you, dude. When you're pocket carrying, you're generally gonna have some sort of soft holster. This is the first problem I have with pocket carry is that it doesn't actually form a rigid barrier around the trigger guard. It helps prevent the trigger from being pulled nonetheless, but it's not perfect. The other problem with pocket carry is that you have to reach your fingers in there, squeeze them in that pocket, properly grip the gun, don't accidentally pull the trigger as you draw, it's slow, it's just not the best way to do it. I think that there are far better options out there. However, if for whatever reason you are limited to this option, it is technically viable. Another method of concealed carrying are thigh holsters. Thigh holsters are typically an elastic band of material that wraps around your thigh, much like this, and utilizes silicone bands inside to maintain a grip. On this, you'll typically mount your weapon on the inner thigh of your non-dominant side. This is typically reserved for subcompacts, you also might want to opt to use some sort of garter belt to further secure the thigh holster. Much like pocket holsters, one of the biggest disadvantages of thigh holsters is a lack of a rigid guard around the trigger. This does raise some safety concerns, so please make sure that you're not necessarily jumping to this as your first method of carry. However, it looks pretty cool, so there is that. Another one's bra holsters. Bra holsters typically mount the gun just below the bra line and above the abdomen front and center. This is particularly best served by people who are a bit more well endowed, uh, not so much for members of the itty bitty titty community like me, but your results may vary. Um, I typically don't recommend this because for one, it's awkward to draw, two, your gun is always pointing in a very weird direction, typically pointed at your non-dominant arm, and it just doesn't really feel very safe in general to me. Um, your mileage may vary and it may very well be the best way to do it in your circumstance though. Another one on the list are ankle holsters. As the name implies, ankle holsters are mounted on the ankle. This can be good for people who do a lot of sitting and only sitting. Um, it's also good for a backup gun because you're a real boss hoss and you just have to have many guns on you. I generally don't even like recommending that people consider ankle holsters as the draw is very awkward, it makes you walk funny, and it only generally works if you wear very long, big pants. But I got you, Jinko fans. Another one are shoulder holsters, which are especially good for detectives in 70s movies and people who like wearing really big coats all the time. This has its disadvantages, though, for those folks. Specifically, the gun is never pointing in a safe direction. It's always pointing back. It also requires a cross draw, which is potentially a liability for flagging things. It also requires a lot of fitment and proper balance, between the two sides of the shoulder holster in order to not be too uncomfortable. A slightly more practical consideration can be belly bands and corsets. These wrap around the abdomen, typically use some sort of elastic material, and have a pocket to holster your weapon in. They're especially good for all sorts of body sizes and shapes and are fairly universal. Some disadvantages include a slightly awkward draw. They oftentimes do not have a rigid material around the trigger area in the holster pocket and because they're a large strip of fabric that wraps around your abdomen, they can cause you to overheat and therefore cause you to sweat a lot and then therefore create a rust liability on your gun. Much like the belly band, there's also concealment undergarments. These often take the shape of bike shorts, of leggings, or some sort of tank top. These generally allow you to store the weapon on your thigh region or your underarm regions. And much like the belly band, they also don't typically have some sort of rigid guard around the trigger so use your discretion. Another potential solution might be off-body carry. Off-body carry usually uses some sort of bag or purse that you carry externally with a firearm stored and holstered inside of it. This is typically not the first method that I would consider. However, it oftentimes is a very practical one 
as your wardrobe just may not work with whatever gun you're using. I do think that even though this is a lifestyle, we do need to make our own choices and try to live our best lives. So this could be potentially a very good option for you. A potential concern for off-body carry is making sure that the firearm is within reach, that it is within your control, and that you're not just leaving your bag sitting somewhere unattended. So make sure that you are very aware of how you are carrying when you're using this method. It's especially important with off-body carry that you're utilizing the best hardware possible for the job. This means not getting a purse that you just throw a gun in into a void mixed around with your chapstick and whatever. It means making sure that you can draw very quickly from it and therefore you want to make sure that whatever compartment that you are storing the firearm in is readily accessible. I generally don't recommend using some sort of zipper compartment or any overly complicated method of drawing and accessing your firearm. I will say that the only well thought out concealed carry purse design I've ever come across is the Guardian purse from Simplistic Flare on Etsy. The reason I like this purse is because the firearm compartment is simply sealed off with a magnetic clasp. This allows you to drive your drawing hand in and draw the firearm very quickly and smoothly. You're not messing around with any weird toggles or any zippers or any flaps. It's supposed to be a very quick draw and I can typically draw from about one second out. A very important thing to note about the purse is that I don't think you should ever be storing a firearm within a purse without a proper rigid holster. For this reason, I personally have integrated a hard holster made out of Kydex inside of this purse to store the firearm within. Another interesting method of concealed carrying are fanny packs. This might sound a little goofy to some people, but if you and your hipster friends typically wear fanny packs anyway, nothing will be strange about it. I will say that concealed carry fanny packs typically look a little bit more distinctive than their pedestrian counterparts, mainly because they're specifically designed around storing a gun in and drawing one quickly from. The 511 concealed carry fanny pack has a quick draw tab to rip away the zipper compartment to quickly access your firearm. I think it's important to highlight yet again that because you are storing a firearm in a very soft material, you may want to consider getting some sort of rigid trigger guard holster to integrate with your fanny pack so as to better reduce the chances of a negligent discharge. The firearms world does tend to be a little bit limited when it comes to traditionally feminine methods of carry. For this reason, I do want to highlight Dean Adams as well as the well-armed woman as great resources for carry accessories. Well, that wraps up my thoughts on concealed carrying. It's a very personal journey and a very demanding skill, so please be very careful in considering every aspect about this. As always, I really appreciate you all tuning in. Please take care. Bye!